I just got. No, no, ma'am, it's completely fine. I will just start the lecture now. Yeah. So, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you all again for the 30 hour certificate course on drafting, pleading, and conveyancing organized by School of Law, Fairfield Institute of Management and Technology, in association with Pro Bono Club. We have with us our esteemed speaker for Module 5 on Pleadings in Commercial Court, Advocate on Record, Fridos Kutubwani. Ma'am is an additional standing counsel of Delhi State Industrial and Infrastructure Development Corporation and amicus curiae for National Consumer Dispute Register Commission. She represents Government of Delhi and Delhi Works Board, being panel counsel for both the bodies and also appears for Reserve Bank of India. In addition to this, Ma'am is also in Porsche expert and is an external committee member of ICC in several corporate companies. She is also a guest lecturer in several law schools and educational institutions. Welcome, ma'am, to the certificate course on drafting, pleading, and conveyancing. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure for me that you have invited me and to interact with uh, such lovely students. Because uh, for us, it's like everyday interaction with the judges and the fight against the opposite councils. But, you know, having students and interacting with them, it's always a pleasure. So, uh, shall I start or you have... Yes, ma'am, you can start. No, no, ma'am, you can start with the lecture. <laughs> no. So, uh, if any of the student has no issues in switching on their cameras, so I would like to see their faces also. But uh, if you're not able to, it's okay. Not a problem. Anyway, so... Uh, <clears throat> First and foremost, I would want to congratulate FIMT with coming up with uh, this course. So, uh, because, uh, you know, I, I'm told that most of the uh, participants here are students. And uh, this course in respect to, I mean, I will speak about the Commercial Courts Act uh, that uh, you have asked me to uh, teach, uh, specifically the pleadings and the drafting part. So this act, Commercial Courts Act, it's very recent and FIMT taking an initiative uh, to have a, a sort of course uh, for children, for students of law. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's going to help them a lot uh, because uh, in fact, uh, some of the lawyers who are practicing today, they are not aware of uh, this uh, act completely. And we have seen in courts that you know, they uh, tend to do certain mistakes. And this act is such that uh, uh, pe people are not sort of forgiven because uh, certain mistakes when we do in CPC, Civil Procedure Court, there uh, it's not that strict, it's a bit lenient. But Commercial Courts Act, one mistake and you're gone. I will uh, uh, teach you all about that and the pleadings part. So uh, let's start and... Uh, I hope that I'm able to, you know, uh, give you some knowledge about the act. Uh, of course, two hours is not uh, too much of time, uh, but still I would uh, see that the best and the important part of the act, I'm able to teach you that. So Commercial Courts Act. See, we have Civil Procedure Code, and that is something which is being taught to all the students in the law school but commercial courts act it's not being taught and i am sure that uh, with time there would be changes in the cu curriculum of the schools uh, law schools of uh, law and i think this would be now part of the syllabus as well for the simple reason that uh, you must have seen that most of us uh, even lawyers uh, are trolled saying that uh, uh, whenever we file some cases in the court, it's, it goes on, it lingers on for 20 years, 25 years, and you know, it's fourth generation of our family that is fighting this case, and still we have not got any result. And uh, you know, in India, the judiciary is quite slow, and uh, we do not get results quickly. That's why most of the people, even if they have certain rights in the properties or uh, anything, uh, they think there is a right, they do not fight for it thinking that uh, money would get wasted, that is one and the time as well. And maybe they won't live to see the decision of the case. So a uh, few years back, 
when uh, in fact uh, this is uh, the time when uh, BGP, BJP government was not there it was the Congress government at that point of time that it was felt that there is too much of commercialization now and uh, you know uh, the different countries now they are uh, sort of shrinking and the businesses businesses are growing now India uh, was actually into number of transactions with the uh, with the countries outside with the foreign countries so uh, it was not just the trade within the country but outside also I have my personal experience also that in uh, one of the uh, clients I had Siemens so uh, they wanted to uh, sort of have some business here. They have already Siemens have it, but it was something different they wanted to do. But uh, somehow they were shying away and they were thinking that, you know, in case some dispute will arise and we will have to go to the courts and here the timeline of the courts is it's like, you know, time period, it takes, it takes a long uh, time to get any result. So they felt that it's not good to invest here. So that's my personal experience that I'm sharing with you. So many years back when uh, prior to the BJP government, that is prior to 2014, it was felt that, you know, yes, India is capable of having international, uh, getting into the international trade and, you know, uh, being there on top like other countries in respect to the businesses. But unfortunately, people are not investing because of the slow process of our courts. Because what happens is that if some party has invested money and uh, some dispute arises and the money gets stuck, so it harms them. The business houses, they suffer. So at that point of time, it was felt that let's come out with something which maybe other countries also have, wherein the commercial disputes can be heard independently or separately by some tribunals or by some other forums, so that you know we have a sort of a strict timeline therein, and uh, we can actually sort of project to the international, uh, you know, to the to other countries that you know in case you invest and some dispute arises, then your problems can be resolved at the earliest. So it was thought and then uh, the law commission, they looked into uh, the US and UK uh, and they felt and they saw that yes, they also have separate system for the commercial uh, units for the commercial cases. So it was felt that, you know, now if we will start having separate tribunals or courts for the commercial uh, matters, it is going to take long. Like, you know, you have for environmental issues, you have NGT. For the service matters, you have uh, Central Administrative Tribunal. For consumer matters, you have this NCDRC and all that. So infrastructure, everything, it takes a long time. And we do not want to stay, uh, you know, uh, at, at the far end when uh, the globalization was there and everything. So uh, then it was felt, okay, fine, in the existing system itself, let's come up with something in respect to the commercial uh, matters. And that is when this Commercial Courts Act was brought in. And uh, with time, what happened? Within the district courts, within high courts, uh, different divisions for the commercial matters were created. And this is all explained in the Commercial Courts Act. It's separate sections, it's given in there. Like in Delhi, we have original side uh, also in the uh, high court. Now, you know, because most of you are students, so you won't understand this. So let me uh, give you a little explanation of this. What happens is that in Delhi, we have so many districts, Dwarka, Kalkaduma, then you have Saket, you have Rohini, and you have so many business houses here. So too much is happening in Delhi. So uh, here, there are too many cases. So what was felt that, okay, now, let's have these district courts and initially they it was said that let all the district courts have cases wherein the amount is up to 25 lakhs somebody has filed a suit somebody has filed a claim and the amount that you're claiming is up to 25 lakhs so it was felt okay let these district courts hear these matters now the uh, claims wherein it's more than 25 lakhs so single judges of the high court 
were given power to hear these matters more than 25, where the amount being claimed was more than 25 lakhs. Later on, there was, uh, after several years, it was felt that, you know, district, uh, that high court is being burdened now. There are so many cases, you know what uh, people used to do? Because it's uh, normally people feel that it's high court. Uh, if you file a case before high court, then the defendant would get a little, uh, you know, serious. But if you file a case against someone in district courts, they think it's district court, it's okay. So people were doing one thing, they were filing cases against the defendants, uh, against the people whom they want to. And the uh, amount that they were writing was like 25 lakhs and 100 rupees because they wanted to come within the high court jurisdiction. 25 lakhs, 200 rupees, okay. So it was felt, you know, that high court is being burdened. Uh, nobody is filing, everybody is trying to bring the uh, pecuniary jurisdiction to the high court. So then it was increased to two crore. Now in the district courts, you can file cases which are up to amount of two crore and then beyond that. So in Delhi, we have, the high court has original jurisdiction. It is that the original suit can be filed before the High Court of Delhi. Uh, many states are there where original suits up till any amount are actually being heard only by the district courts, not by the High Court. So we have, in Mumbai, we have original jurisdiction. In Delhi High Court, we have original jurisdiction. You can go through uh, the Google actually to find that which all courts uh, have the original jurisdiction and which not. So uh, therefore it was uh, felt that, okay, fine now, Original. So in Delhi, uh, it, it was tested. First, the commercial courts thing was tested. And here in Delhi, what happened, they created commercial division in the high court. And in the district courts, they created commercial courts. You know, just noted down somewhere. Because, you know, uh, if sometimes someone, you, you speak, you all, all of you uh, students therein, if some, uh, you know, you say CPC and some child is not able to understand what is CPC, first year child maybe. So all of you make fun of them. Oh, you don't know what is CPC. Okay, Civil Procedure Court. So similarly, when this Commercial Courts Act came in, many people were not aware that there is a huge difference between commercial division and commercial courts. So once you will know this, you can actually show off. So... In the high courts, we have commercial division. In the district courts, we have commercial courts. So this is a difference. In Delhi, because we have original jurisdiction, high court can hear original uh, suits. So in Delhi, we have commercial division. And in district court here, we also have commercial courts. In most of the states, we have commercial courts. Now, in commercial courts, it's uh, DJ, district judge, who hears the original suits of the commercial matters. And in high courts, it's commercial division court, single judge, who will hear your uh, uh, original suit of commercial matters. Now, the question is that once you file a suit before a district judge, commercial court, so they have designated also in uh, district courts, it is district judge civil and district judge commercial. So there is a difference also created there in that this particular thing is for commercial courts. So DJ, district judge, commercial. And in high court also, it is specifically given honorable single judge, commercial division. So now when you file an original suit before the uh, district court, before the uh, district judge, and maybe the order comes in your favor or maybe the order goes against you. One of the parties will go and file an appeal. So appeal is filed before the single judge of, uh, before the appellate division of the high court. So in high court, we have commercial division original side and commercial division appellate side. So any appeal against the commercial court district judge, it lies before commercial appellate bench of the high court. 
Now, in case you file your case before the High Court, from there it goes to the Supreme Court. Okay, so now these are all you will read about all this, but why we have gathered today is because we want to see that what kind of pleadings and how we have to draft our suits when it's before the commercial courts or the commercial division. Why we, I, I told you that why we came up with the Commercial Courts Act for the simple reason because we, because the uh, government felt and uh, the, even the judiciary felt that for the commercial suits, we should have courts where the process is done expeditiously. The orders are passed expeditiously, the trial and the whole process is done expeditiously and it's not as slow as in the civil suits normally. So therefore, amendments were brought to Civil Procedure Code also in respect with the commercial matters. So the Commercial Courts Act is to be read with CPC, the amendments in the Civil Procedure Code. I don't know how many of you have uh, Commercial Courts Act with you right now, but the Commercial Courts Act very clearly, if you will see, the Commercial Courts Act, it talks about the amendment. There is a schedule given after, after uh, your section 23 of the Act, a schedule is given, which actually explains that what all amendments have been brought to the Civil Procedure Code, so that we can sort of make commercial courts uh, process uh, quick and expeditious. Now, section 16 of the Commercial Courts Act, it says amendments to the CPC in its application to commercial disputes. So it is that when there is a commercial dispute, the person files a suit that is called suit only. But it is to be seen that the question is somebody has written wait for a while what is this is it for me or no ma'am they might be uh, for the attendance link or something it's okay, okay. fine, fine. ma'am it's for the attendance okay okay yeah. so uh now uh because normally uh, you must have seen that in the civil procedure court it is given suit written statement rejoinder Everything it's given therein, the applications to be filed, which applications are to be filed, if you want to amend your suit, if you want to amend your written statement, every the process, whole procedure is given in the civil procedure code. And that procedure code was applicable to the commercial cases also, before commercial courts were established. So therefore, it was said that, yes, we are coming out with the Commercial Courts Act, but at the same time, let's also say that civil procedure code would be also amended, but only in respect to the commercial disputes. Now, what are commercial disputes? Section 2 of this act, actually, uh, it explains that what are the... What are the disputes which are considered as commercial? Because see, for example, tomorrow your one person comes to you and he says that, you know, I want to file a civil suit. I want a recovery of this much of amount from the other side. They have taken money from me and they are not returning it. Now you will say, okay, fine. So there was a time when you simply used to file the civil suit. But now you have to see that the dispute that has arisen in your client's case, whether it would be covered under the commercial court or under the civil court. Why? Because in case it is covered under the commercial court and you file it before the civil court, so judge will immediately tell you that I do not have the jurisdiction and your case would be returned. You will be told, no, go file fresh and you will get insulted before your client because client will say, 
अरे इसको तो ये भी नहीं पता है मैं इसके साथ क्या करूं है ना देन द क्लाइंट विल गो अवे सो देर फॉर इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू शुड नो दैट वॉट ऑल डिस्प्यूट कैन बी फाइल एंड शुड बी फाइल बिफोर द कमर्शियल कोर्ट एंड वॉट डिस्प्यूट शुड बी फाइल बिफोर द सिविल कोर्ट सो देर फॉर यू विल हैव टू सी सेक्शन टू टू सी मोर स्पेसिफिकली इट एक्सप्लेन्स इट गिवस डेफिनेशन ऑफ कमर्शियल डिस्प्यूट and in that it has given almost 22 items where in it is explained that any dispute which is arising out of these issues would be considered as commercial disputes now very interesting fact is that only these 22 items which are given therein would be considered as commercial disputes nothing beyond that because it's exhaustive until and unless until and unless the parliament comes out with some notification saying that from now onwards xyz dispute would be also considered as commercial dispute why is this restriction on this because then everybody would start coming with some or other ground and saying that this item is also commercial dispute because now commercial uh, uh, courts everybody knows that they are very quick so now lawyers and people they would just like you know i initially said that you know people were thinking that high courts are better courts so they started increasing the pecuniary jurisdiction of filing cases before high court similarly now people have understood that commercial courts are very quick so they would try to bring in some case and say that no this is also commercial dispute so now courts have restricted it and said no whatever is given in these item 22 items only that would be considered as commercial dispute nothing beyond that in this item 22 says such other commercial disputes as may be notified by the central government so it's exhaustive until unless central government will notify some dispute as a commercial dispute it won't be considered as commercial dispute so export import carriage of goods construction of infrastructure uh, contracts franchising agreements joint venture agreements shareholding agreements partnership agreements uh, insurance and reinsurance all these matters whatever is given in that uh, uh, section these are all uh, commercial disputes now also very important thing is that for filing commercial uh, matters it is necessary that the minimum amount at least that you are claiming it has to be at least 3 lakhs if your amount is less than 3 lakhs then you cannot file before the commercial courts so the dispute even if it is commercial in nature and it is within that definition of 2c uh, uh that is commercial dispute but the amount that is in dispute is less than 3 lakhs then you cannot file before the commercial court so it's very important that you remember this because kal ko jab client aayega and client says that my dispute is of 2.5 lakhs or 1.5 but it's commercial and you will say okay file we will file before the commercial court so again uh, you know uh, you can get insulted if uh, the judge will say oh you don't know so but now you know that minimum amount is 3 lakhs acha ji now uh, so it is that minimum amount 3 lakhs and within the definition of 2c whatever item 20, 22 items given therein okay so that is there one more interesting thing that's uh, part of this commercial courts act is uh, i am sure uh, most of you must have seen uh, some of the web series uh, on the law uh, you have this uh, what is that mark and what is the name of that boston legal is there apart from that there mark is... mark and spencer yes 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 this is uh, what is the name of that show we have that uh, prince harry's wife also in that i don't know suits 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 right. suits 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 so you uh, there are others also good wife is also there hai na hum log bhi dekhte hain sometimes you know when we get time uh, although we don't get time but sometimes on the go so uh, now in those why i referred to that for the simple reason you know uh, we i i am doing international matters and i have been traveling to the courts uh, in different uh, countries 
So therein, uh, the more focus is on the settlement. Because therein, the fees of the lawyers is too high. And also, the fees that is taken by the courts, that's also very high. As well as the whole procedure, uh, like, you know, uh, the drafting process and then uh, filing before the courts, the hearing dates and everything. You know, and, um, in the suits where you are recovering, you have to file the court fees and everything. So that's too high there. So even the uh, big corporates, and when in case the award or order goes against you, it's a huge amount that you have to shell out. So what happens is that most of the times these uh, um, big corporates, they tend to settle, even the big corporates. Why I'm saying big, big corporates? Because normally we will feel that big corporates will go ahead with the litigation. But no, uh, we have seen this that uh, they tend not to go ahead with the litigation. And they try that the matter should be uh, resolved before even going uh, to the court, seeking the motion in the matter, notice of motion in the matter. So uh, why I asked you that if you have watched this web series, because of course you are students and you do not have that kind of experience of uh, seeing that what happens in the courts in UK, US. So, uh, but these web series, they give good idea and it most of the times it's like that only. Like hamare pe kya hota hai na? In, in our country, the movies and the web series, they will show, oh, Yes, Judge Sahab Ye. And if you will do that in the court, they will issue contempt against us. Now they are showing uh, a bit of real courts, but there was a time that uh, it was all uh, not real. But in these web series, they are showing the real thing. So uh, now uh, in those web series, you have seen that normally they see and they uh, tend to settle the matters outside the court. In most of the web series, you might have seen this, that you know the parties come and in the conference room, they will sit and they will try to settle the matter. Now, because the law commission actually looked into the commercial courts and the commercial uh, disposal of the cases of US and UK, more specifically, so they found that in these countries, uh, it is seen that parties are asked to uh, settle the matter in a case they're able to before going to the court. And uh, they felt, the, the uh, law, law Commission felt that we should bring it to India as well. If we are talking of uh, having uh, expeditious disposal of the commercial matters, then it's that we bring whole of it, whatever is happening in the other countries. So once you will have your Commercial Courts Act, you will see that there is mention about pre-settlement, um, uh, pre-mediation, uh, pre-institution mediation and settlement. It's chapter 3A and the section is 12A, pre-institution mediation and settlement. So the title is, the heading is pre-institution mediation and settlement. So pre-institution is, means before having the case filed against the other party in the commercial courts, you have mediation and settlement and this is through the institution, the mediation institutions. So mediation institutions were also established in all the courts wherein we have commercial courts and the commercial division. So what happens is that you are not allowed to file a commercial suit until unless you show that you have been to the institution for mediation where notice was issued to the other side and you Maybe you are able to show that the mediation was non-starter. Non-starter means that the other side never came. They never participated. They never cooperated. Notices are issued by this institution. In, in Saket we have, in uh, uh, your uh, Karka Duma, in all, all, in all the district courts, in high court we have. So we have these uh, mediation centers. They would issue, you will file an application before 
these mediation centers. And in the mediation center, you will say that this is my dispute and this is the other side's details. You please invite them for the settlement in respect to these disputes. Now, the notice will go, then some time would be given. If the other side will not respond, some further more time would be given to the other side. And if they would not respond, then the mediation center will write in a report saying it was a non-starter, that it never started, the mediation never started. They will keep record with them. And you file suit before the commercial court. Therein you will mention that we went for mediation. This is the application that we filed. And the other side never appeared. That is why we're compelled to file this. And if court doubts that, you know, maybe you're just saying it that you went for it, but you never did. So they can call for the report from the mediation center. So they keep that report with themselves. It's in their archives and it can be called for any time. So it means that before filing commercial suit, the mandatory part is that you have to go for the settlement. If you do not, your matter would not be entertained. Now there are cases where in maybe you have some urgency where you cannot wait for the mediation period. So therein you have to file an application and you will have to show that what is the urgency that you did not wait or you did not go for the mediation? You know, for example, there is some, uh, maybe you have uh, some perishable goods and urgently you have to file the suit, commercial suit. Now, if you will first go for the mediation and all that, maybe damage would be done. So something which will show to the court, you know, you wanted to go for mediation, but if you would have gone for it, then you would have lost a lot of things. So therefore, uh, you went straight away. But if it is not the case, if court feels that, you know, you just tried to bypass and make fool of the court, then of course your suit would not be entertained. So section 12A is, is an important part of the Commercial Courts Act for the Commercial Court suit. It's important that you first go for the mediation. Now, because we are into drafting and pleadings part, so therefore, you can have Schedule 1, Form 1 of the Commercial Courts Act. It's actually given in the Commercial Courts Rules 2018. It's part of the Bear Act itself. Form 1, Schedule 1, Mediation Application Form. So in the Act itself, they have given the format in which an application to the mediation center is made. Now, keeping in view, it has been several years now uh, from 2015, then there was amendment in uh, 18, 19 and all. Uh, now we have a quite established commercial courts. So the mediation centers, they have now this printed form also. They have uh, themselves a printed a form for the mediation purposes that where, which you have to fill in and give to the mediation center saying that these are the details of the other side. And now the form one mediation application form, it is annexed, it's part of the Commercial Courts Act. Therein, uh, you have to give the details of the parties, that is you and the other side you want to challenge, uh, you want to uh, uh, array as a de defendant, and the details of the dispute. And for this mediation, normally the mediation center will charge fees. You know, that fees is to be also paid. Why I am telling you this part also? Because when tomorrow a client will come to you and say that, you know, I want to file this commercial suit, so you will inform him that first it's mandatory until unless there is some kind of urgency that you're able to show that you want to bypass the mediation, that you have to go for the mediation. You know? And for that, you will have to tell him that there is fees for mediation also. Otherwise, uh, if later on you will tell him that mediation center is asking for fees, then he will be like, you never told me this. <laughs> so it would be embarrassing. So mediation centers, they normally charge fees also. So uh, every court has their own uh, fee schedule and everything. So 
that is there so that you have to tell to the client also that for commercial suits first mediation you have to go mediation mein itna fees lagega and everything so in case the other side never appears never comes for the settlement talks then it's called non starter and in case the other side comes and the parties sit seriously and discuss the matter but the matter fails settlement does not happen so in that case failure report is prepared by the mediation center failure report mein kya hota hai this is not only for the commercial courts but otherwise also when a mediation happens in case the parties do not reach to any settlement in the failure report it simply said that the mediation failed they do not record any submissions or anything of either of the parties because these are settlement talks there are times you know when uh, maybe you would say certain things which you would not be saying in case you would be before court arguing those matters kya hota na jab aap dost ke sath baithe ho settle kar rahe ho that time you tend to sort of want to resolve things and maybe you will admit certain things also so therefore in the uh, mediation if there is a failure of the mediation then it is not uh, written there it simply says failure so the first and the important part that you have learned is that your dispute has to be uh, as per the definition given to see commercial dispute thereafter it is very important that you go for the mediation and settlement before uh, you uh, file your civil if file your commercial suit and Uh, where is uh, this where this mediation happens it happens in the institutions which are in the different courts and how do you approach you file application under form i form 1 schedule 1 which is part of the commercial courts act itself you can see the format there and in which in case the settlement happens then the settlement is there then you do not go and file your commercial suit of course because settlement happens mediation center would Uh, put its stamps and everything on it, and uh, it will be that the settlement has happened, and then the other side can never retract from it. In case other side never appears, then it's a non-starter report. In case the other side appears, both of you talk, but matter doesn't settle, then there is a failure report. Now, if there is a failure report, then what? Then comes the commercial suit. That is when you have to file the commercial suit. Acha. कमर्शियल सूट के लिए बिफोर वी गो ऑन द ड्राफ्टिंग पार्ट इन सिविल प्रोसीजर कोड वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट वंस यू फाइल अ सूट एंड समन्स आर इश्यूड इन योर सूट समन्स इज दैट द अदर साइड वेन इफ द कोर्ट फाइंड यस देर इज समथिंग इन योर सूट दैट इज इट्स विद इन लिमिटेशन एंड द डिस्प्यूट दैट यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉज ऑफ एक्शन you are saying it is somewhere you know where yes other party should be called and your case should be admitted so they will issue summons to the other side so that their story can be heard story of the other side in case the court feels or oh, no you have filed something frivolous normally court doesn't dismiss on the first day itself but some cases they feel it's obnoxious it's frivolous they're just wasting the time then they will dismiss otherwise most of the times they will issue summons will uh, call on the other side so in civil procedure court when summons are issued to the other side so this plaintiff the person who has filed the suit is asked to deposit process fees with the court even if it is uh, whether it's high court or district courts the procedure is same that process fees is to be filed because what happens is that the suit that you have filed it has to be sent by post to the other side and you know the expenses and charges and everything that is to be borne by the parties and apart from that the officials who would be working on it so for that the court fees is needed so process fees is there plus the expenses anyways so uh, if your suit is admitted by the court they will issue summons to the other side and you have to deposit the process fees within the time period that is allowed by the court and when the other side receives it within 30 days of receiving summons the other side has to file its reply its written statement okay now 
in case other side is not able to file its written statement within 30 days, then 30 more days can be given. And in fact, as per this Honorable Supreme Court, 90 days, 30 plus 60, that's also okay. And then maybe 30 more days. That comes to 120 days. So if you have a normal civil suit and you file it beyond 120 days, 30 days after statutory period. Let's keep that in mind. Within 30 days, you have to file your written statement, your re reply. But in case you are not able to, till 120 days also, it's condonable. It's fine. Courts will not, uh, you know, uh, will not uh, pass an order uh, asking you to deposit cost or something while allowing some more time to you. So beyond 120 days also, courts have the power to condone the delay. Maybe they will impose cost on you. That's why you didn't file it within 20, 120 days uh, and within the statutory period of 30 days. So civil suit may what happens is that beyond 120 days also, the courts can condone the delay. That is why the cases linger on. This is the reason. Other side will keep on, you know, maybe the other side does not have that kind of a good case. So they will keep on seeking extension of the time. Yes, at one point of time, their right is closed, but they will give any reason. And it can be condoned by the judges. But with Commercial Courts Act, with Commercial Courts Act, let's keep in mind that the courts, the judges do not have power to condone delay beyond 120 days. So, as per the Commercial Courts Act, once the suit is admitted, summons are received by the other side. Within 30 days, file your reply. If you are not filing it within 30 days, then 60 days. And if you file it beyond 120 days, no, it will not be entertained. Court will not have power to condone your delay. So, it is very important that we remember this, that within 120 days, in fact, within 30 days only you file it. Bohat kuch problem ho jati hai, any issue. Beyond 120 days, it cannot be entertained. And Supreme Court has very clearly said it, that no court has power to condone it beyond 120 days. Why? Because this act has been specifically brought into picture so that the matters do not linger on. So the timeline is to be followed. So the parties are to complete their written statement, to file their written statement be, be within 30 days and not later than 120 days from the date of summons. If you are able to show that you did not receive summons on such and such date, which is being claimed by the other side or by the registry of the court, then okay, fine. But otherwise, no. 120 days hai, to 120 days hai. Okay. Now, after this, within 30 days, you have to do inspection of the documents. Inspection of the documents. Once you file your written statement, then the because plaintiff has filed some documents, you know. So you have to inspect those documents. That is, you have the opportunity to see the originals of those documents. That the documents, the copies of which have been filed by the other side. Maybe he has filed some fake forged document, you know. So you will have 30 days time to inspect that, which can be extended to 60 days. Then... Once you see all those original documents, then within 15 days, you have to, within 15 days of uh, inspection, you have to file your admission denial of the documents. Admission denial of the documents is that you will say that, okay, this document, maybe, you know, uh, uh, Swati ma'am will say, I sent such and such email to uh, X, V, X, Y, Z student. And the student says, no, I never received it. So Swati ma'am will have to show that email 
है ना एंड विल हैव टू शो दैट दिस वाज द टाइम एंड दिस इज व्हाट ईमेल में तो डिस्पैच का कोई प्रॉब्लम ही नहीं अंटिल एंड लेस समबडी हैज डॉक्टर्ड इट सो अदरवाइज ईमेल इट वुड बी देयर ओके इट वाज सेंट नाउ देन स्वाति मैम सेज दैट आई सेंट सच एंड सच लेटर टू द स्टूडेंट्स एंड स्टूडेंट सेज आई नेवर रिसीव्ड इट बट स्वाति मैम इज वेरी इंटेलिजेंट एंड ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट सो स्वाति मैम विल शो द tracking uh, record wherein it would be that delivered on such and such date dispatched on such and such date she will have all those uh, tracking that receipts and everything so once that is there other side maybe you will deny that but she will have a good case that this is there so what happens is for that there is a format wherein we prepare admission deny affidavit that is the other side would say that i deny this document okay i never received it and there are documents where in you say yes i received it but you do not agree with the contents of those documents for example the teacher has written uh, that your attendance is uh, only 25% so you would not be allowed to sit in the examination now you uh, therefore You, so you will say yes i did receive this uh, letter but the contents are wrong because it cannot be 25% see my this thing that thing and it is 77% or whatever 82% ab receive to kiya hai aapne document you have received the document so you cannot deny that this such a document exists so you will say receipt admitted contents denied okay now so it is called admission denial so therefore once written statement is filed 30 days time is given so that you inspect the documents you see the veracity of these documents and thereafter within 15 days you file your admission denial of the documents after that the court ma management hearing happens that is the court then would decide for the cross examination examination and that is also within a time frame which is given in the commercial courts act that within this time frame only the cross examination and the uh, examination of the parties would happen and then within this period of completion of the trial the hearing has to happen so everything has been put into a time frame so once you would uh, would peruse the act you will see that everything is given there in black and white but within this period this period they will not condone delay so time frame is given there and within that time frame everything is to be done now this is something which uh i told you about the commercial courts act you know that this is something which is important aspect of the commercial courts act. otherwise commercial court it has a lot many uh sections it has a lot to give but in uh, this time frame and for the reasons that we have to focus a bit on the drafting part but for that this was important that you know that why this act is there and if you want to file the commercial suits uh what is important that you should know and uh also that uh, what is the timeline for the pleadings you know so now coming to the drafting of the pleadings for that we have to see apne aap many of you must have already interned na most of you must have interned with uh, some or other lawyers hai na if somebody has interned with someone you can just tell me yes ma'am i have done the internship ha ah. so you must have seen the drafts also of the suits hmm? yes ma'am uh, i have seen the draft yes so in the drafts when we file a, when we draft a suit in that suit it is supported by you must have seen that most of the suits most of the suits ne all suits uh, all the pleadings are supported with an affidavit yes ma'am it is necessary it is important why because the uh, plaintiff actually you know you are a lawyer he has given a vakalatnama to you and has said that i have authorized him to draft in everything but whatever contents are there all those come from the client only that is when you write whatever the client tells you you write 
and maybe the client is giving you some wrong information also. So you can't be hauled for that. The lawyer cannot be hauled for some false information that the client has given. So what happens is that the courts have made this provision that your suit that you draft, it is supported by the affidavit wherein the plaintiff says that the contents of this affidavit have been drafted by my counsel under my instructions. I have gone through it and they are correct, true, as derived from the records of the case or as if it's a some corporation, government body or if it is some private uh, company, so uh, some institute, so we'll say that uh, as the uh, record uh, is as per the records derived from the uh, as per the records derived from the uh, uh, corporation or the corporate or whatever it is. And in case it is something which is personal knowledge of the person, we'll write there in that as per my knowledge. And I have instructed the as per my instructions, the counsel has drafted it. Usme kya hota? The lawyer is saved. That as per the instructions of my client, I have drafted this. And the client has also given an affidavit supporting it. So if tomorrow anything comes out and it's found that some statement, averment is wrong, was false. So it is the client, your client who will be hauled, not you. Now, some difference has been made in the commercial court suit and uh, then what we used to file in the civil suits. In the commercial court suit, it is called statement of truth and uh, the format is also given within the act itself. It is appendix 1, appendix I, statement of truth. So there is a little bit of difference in this then the uh, affidavits or that is supported that we file in supporting the civil suits. The difference is actually that commercial courts, because they do not want to linger on the uh, proceedings, what happens is that they say that whatever documents are in your possession in respect to the suit that you are file, filing, you file all that. Do not conceal anything. Okay. Because later on, it should not happen that towards the fag end, you say that, you know, there was this document, I could not file it and for this reason, that reason. Yes, sometimes what happens is during the pendency of the cases, new documents come into existence. That's a different thing. Or maybe you were not aware of a certain document and somehow you uh, got into, you, uh, it, you got uh, that uh, document. So, uh, that's a different thing altogether where you will have to satisfy the court also that how come this document was not with you initially and now you have got it. But otherwise, commercial court is very strict about this. It says that all documents in your power, possession, your control and custody pertaining to the facts of the case has to be filed by the plaintiff when he's filing the suit. And when the defendant is filing its written statement, he also has to uh, submit the documents. So, when you file the commercial court suit, in that you actually given in the one of the columns that this document is originally in possession of defendant, or maybe you just have the copy. For example, there is a will, okay, and this will says that uh, uh, the father has given uh, therein that uh, ABCD property, I give it to my second son named XYZ. And I give such and such property to my other son, this, this, this. And there are chances maybe the son who is your client just has, uh, is having just the photocopy of the will, is not having the original will. So normally the will is, it would be registered and uh, you can always get a copy, uh, certified copy from the uh, sub-registrar. But for example, you file uh, the copy. So you will say that the registered will and the original will is maybe with your brother. Okay. 
so you have to give source of the document also and where the origin who has original possession of the document so when you will be referring relying on a document which is just the photocopy that you have therein you will have to also say that the original is in possession of the plaintiff or original is in the possession of the defendant so that is also to be given fine so uh, if we will have your uh, let me see if i can share it see so uh, all of you can see my screen is it visible to all of you yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am so this is affidavit yes, this this document i will share with swati ma'am and uh, she can give it to all of you okay uh, for now we can uh, look into it and later on you can have the copy of this so uh, in a commercial suits we do not write affidavit we write statement of truth okay and here it is i so and so son of so and so aged about so and so having office at so and so hereby solemnly affirm and verify so the format is same for the plaintiff as well as for the defendant plaintiff would be filing the suit when defendant would be filing their written statement it would be also supported with the statement of truth this format is also appendix i appendix i uh, of your uh, commercial courts act it is there so you can have it from there also anyways so uh, defendant will also support its written statement with this statement of truth and plaintiff as well now let's see what it has uh most of you who have already interned and seen the affidavit and after this class also if you get time you can actually see from the internet also as well uh that the affidavits which we file supporting the civil suits are much different from the affidavits that we file supporting the commercial courts as uh, commercial suits so here in the first is i am authorized so and so like whoever you are that the plaintiff details or in case it's the defendant who is filing it so his details understood contents of accompanying plaint being filed by the plaintiff and the same are true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief uh, maybe you know you have a uh, certain uh, documents or maybe you are that's what i told you that if you are a corporation or something like that so in that situation you can always write that as per the documents or the records available with the uh, company with the defendant company or the plaintiff company nothing contained in the accompanying plaint is false and nothing material has been concealed there from yahan tak to theek hai yahan tak it is more or less same only now coming to fourth i say that the statement made in para so and so of the accompanying commercial suit are true to my knowledge and legal statements made in other relevant paragraphs in the particularly so and so of the commercial suit are based on legal advice received by me and the last para is prayer zahir si baat hai you know we also uh, put in certain paras uh, where which are necessary which we feel are necessary in respect to the legal submissions so obviously the plaintiff is not aware that whether whatever is being advised to him is correct or not so he says that you know i uh, matlab i am told that these paras are legal paras and they are good for me so therefore uh, they have uh, as per my advice i have allowed them to be included i say there is no false statement or concealment of any material fact document or record and i have included information that is according to me relevant for the present commercial suit now this para 6 it's very important if this is not there in your statement of truth so then it is very bad in hindi we say to bawal mat jayega because you know what happens is that in case you do not put this para in your statement of truth which you file along with your commercial suit supporting your commercial suit then the other side can always object and if 
it is found that actually you have not filed it. It is not there. Then the courts have the power to even strike out the affidavit. Okay, it will not be considered correct. So this can be a ground for uh, ground for an adverse order against you. So therefore, it's very important that you remember that in commercial suits, this para six, it may be any para, any number ho sakta hai, but the contents are to be same. And uh, in your format also on appendix I, it is given there. So what does this say? It says, I say that all the documents in my power, possession, control or custody, which are relevant and are pertaining to the facts and circumstances of the proceedings have been disclosed and copies thereof annexed with their company commercial suit. And that I do not have any other document in my power, possession, control or custody which I have referred to or is of material importance qua the a company commercial suit. So here you are actually making a statement. You are saying that whatever was relevant to the case those documents have been already filed by you, which were in your power, possession, control, or custody. So tomorrow, if you will come up with some, some document at the final stage of the case and say that, oh, oh, I forgot this, then the courts will take you for task. That you already have given an undertaking saying that whatever was relevant to the case, that's already filed. Now you are saying at the uh, end that, you know, you need this, you want to file a file kar sakte ho, you can file, but then you have to show either the document has come into existence after you file this affidavit or possibly this document was there, but it was not in your possession. Somehow you got it. You know, for that, you will have to make a case to convince the judge. Otherwise, it will, be, it will not be taken on record. And the affidavit which would not have this ever meant, this para, that affidavit can be striked off. So, in your uh, Commercial Courts Act, there is one Order 13A. Enough. Order, no, no, sorry. Order 15A, Case Management Hearing. Thereafter, they have given the amendments to the Civil Procedure Court. So, there is one Amendment to Order 90. In that it is given, in that it is given, format and guidelines of affidavit of evidence and affidavit must comply with the form and requirements set forth. Uh, one second. Huh. So here it says where the court is of where the court is of you that an affidavit is a mere representation. No, it is not that. There is one clause which says that in case your affidavit would not have this particular para, then uh, it can be striked off. So it's very important that you look into that you uh, actually have your supporting affidavit. As per this, what uh, I have shared here, and it's also your, yes, first schedule, order 6, rule 15A, order 11, rule 3, statement of truth, it is given therein. And in this, if you do not file it as per this particular affidavit format, then it can be striked to your suit. Even In fact, your suit will not be entertained. So it's very important that you keep in mind that you put this particular para uh, in your uh, affidavit. If it is not there, then it would be uh, dangerous for you. For both the sides, for the 
plaintiff as well as for the defendants. Okay. Now, coming to what I was telling you that you once you file the suit, then you have uh, to show also that who is in the possession of which document. Ye dekhe. So this is an index. This is an index which has been filed along with the index of the documents which, which has been filed along with the suit plate. Okay. Normally, you must have seen that uh, in the civil courts, when we file the suit, along with that, you file list of the documents. In list of documents, what happens is that you normally write a uh, copy of, for example, yaha par humne diya hai, copy of registered commercial lease deed dated so and so. And then you give the page number. In the normal civil suits what happens is that in the list of documents you will simply write details of documents or the particulars of the documents you will just give copy of the registered so and so and so and the page number but in the commercial suits what happens is that you have to give the documents in power possession control custody of that in whose possession this particular document is what have you filed? Have you filed if in case the possession is with you of the original document, then have you filed a photocopy or you have filed the original? Then you will write here photocopy filed with the plane. Mode of execution, issuance of re uh, receipt, registered lease deed and in possession of the plaintiff since uh, execution. So it is that how you got this particular document. Yeah, nah? For example, yeah, I was talking about the will. So you are relying on a will. So you are showing that uh, this is the will that I am relying on. Then you will show that it is in the possession of the plaintiff. That is you are the plaintiff and it's in your possession. You have filed a photocopy. Of course, people now normally they do not file the originals. They would show uh, during the inspection to the other party. But otherwise, they will keep the original with them. And that is a good thing. Uh, if in case the court says no you bring it so that the court can also see whether in case it's forged or uh, something else some other issues there so uh, you have to show it to the court anyways so then since when how you have this document so here you will for example say that uh, the will came to be registered on such and such date and my father handed over it to me okay so, line of custody, original with the plaintiff and the copy received by defendant. Yaha pe, this has been, this is, this uh, particular uh, uh, document that, kya ho hai? somebody else is writing on it. Okay. So, this particular document that has been filed, you know, it is said that original is with the plaintiff and copy that I am the plaintiff herein. I am in the possession of this document. I am also filing photocopy. This particular lease document is with me since the lease was uh, executed. And here then line of custody. Line of custody is also to be written. That original is with me and the photocopy was given to the other side. That is to the defendant. Then the page number. Okay, essay. For example, then there is this uh, copy of notice termination lease deed dated so and so. You write original in possession of defendant. That I do not have the this notice of termination or in original. It is with the defendant. It's with the other side. I have filed photocopy. How you came into uh, possession of this particular document? It was given to me by the plaintiff, issued by plaintiff. Yeah. Original with the defendant and office copy retained by the plaintiff. Original is with the defendant of the copy of notice of termination. Ye, uh, plaintiff ne issue kiya. Yeah. Malab, for example, you are issuing some notice to the other side. So, of course, original will go to the other side and you will just retain an uh, office copy. So, that you will have to explain. 
So it means that Commercial Courts Act has made it uh, important that whatever document you are filing, you show by way of your uh, index itself that whether the document that you have filed is original or not. And if it is not original, what is it? And if you are not in possession of original document, then who is in possession of that particular document? So it is made clear in the beginning itself. Bad may time ni waste karna. Now, in case this list is not attached with your written statement, this it is not in this format, the court can always reject your uh, written statement or your uh, suit claim that you have not given the source and everything. So that is very important. You have to give all this this information, and uh, you have to follow this particular format. Okay. So here it is given. See, I have shared this particular case open. So so many documents are there. This is how you have to give. Then you write plaintiff through counsel and it ends here. So this is the index of list of documents for your commercial court suit. Uh, what you have to write is list of documents filed by plaintiff with the plaint as per order 6 rule 1 to CPC. Uh, to CPC kai, but amendment has been brought to this and the format is given. This is the format. Now affidavit also I showed you yeah, this particular affidavit in support. So in that, what I told you is that it's very important that you write this power, possession, control and everything. That's very important. Achha, now coming to the suit, how to draft the suit. So, first you have to ये आपने अपना बनाया list of ये आपने index बनाया सबसे पहले you have to make a master index in this okay in master index memo of parties आता है memo of parties means where the details of the parties are given list of dates and events हो गया आपका uh, so, uh, you remember this. Normally, you must have seen in the suits. Some some lawyers, they do, uh, before the civil, normal civil courts, not just the commercial courts, uh, in the normal civil courts, uh, most of the people, they will simply start with a civil suit under such and such uh, section, order. But they will not uh, give the list of dates and events. But in the commercial courts, it's mandatory that in the draft of the pleadings, uh, in your plaint, you give list of dates and events. Then there is your commercial suit. You have uh, put in there court fees, proof of service. This is not okay. So here this is the list of documents. After the master index, master index is part one. Then there is this list of documents that I told you how you have to go about it the particulars of the document, then in whose position the document is, then what kind of uh, you have filed, whether original or copy, since when and you have it and who has executed it. And if you do not have the original, then who has it? And then the page number of your suit, uh, where this is, uh, this particular document has been annexed. Acha. Now, list memo of parties is like this. Court ka naam likha aapne. Party A, Party B, Plaintiff, Defendant. Memo of Parties. So and so and so. It's a plaintiff versus so and so. You give the whole address, everything. In the Memo of Parties, you give the whole address. Okay. And Defendant. This is this party is Defendant. This party is Plaintiff. Who is filing this? Plaintiff is filing this. Now comes the list of dates and events after the memo of parties. 
in the title simple title normally you do not have to give the address and everything you just write the name of the prop, uh, plaintiff name of the defendant and you do not need to give the address and everything that is already given by you in the memo of parties okay this is applicable to normal civil suits as well as to this commercial courts so list of dates and events so what happens is normally in the courts every day so many matters are listed you know so many a times what happens is that the judges are not able to go through all the uh, pleadings all the documents uh, because every day possibly 100 100 2 200 even matters are listed before one single judge so it is always good that you have list of dates and events in two to three pages you prepare it it is uh, the beginning and it's the top of the your know, top of your suit the first thing because in that what happens is that the events are given in brief so judge can just go through it and if he feels then he can go through the rest of the pleadings and everything where you have given it in detail so a uh, list of dates sometimes we also give the synopsis that's also good that in one uh, page or in one and a half page or in two pages you have just given the gist of your uh, case that this is what actually you are uh, before the court for so in list of dates and events also like for example i am saying here plaintiff and defendant executed lease deed so and so and so and so so from here only itself the maybe the judge would uh, understand okay this is uh, in respect to the lease deed and it does come under the section 2c that is the definition of the commercial dispute and then he will go through and the rest of whatever then what happened then what happened then what happened hai na yahan pe to maine i have just given the uh, one blank and then and then towards the end you say for this reason i have i am filing this suit hence the plaintiff has filed the suit so list of dates and events is very important to your uh, commercial suit then comes the main suit here before your commercial suit starts here yes you do give the uh, name of the party along with the address kaha dete hai मेमो ऑफ पार्टीज में एंड देन बिफोर दिस कमर्शियल सूट का यहाँ पे स्टार्ट होता है इन सम ऑफ द प्लीडिंग से रिट पिटिशन और सो मेनी टाइम्स वी डू नॉट गिव द एड्रेस इज हेयर वी गिव इट ओनली इन द मेमो ऑफ पार्टीज हेयर वी जस्ट सिंपली राइट ए वर्सेज बी एनी वेज सो बट इन दिस वी डू गिव सो फर्स्ट यू गिव द टाइटल ऑफ द सूट दैट वॉट यू आर सीकिंग बाई वे ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर कमर्शियल सूट मे बी यू आर सीकिंग द recovery of money maybe you are seeking execution of that particular agreement or something whatever it is there whatever dispute is there so this was for commercial suit for recovery of amount of such and such amount along with pendelite like and ye galat kar do pendelite right ha and future interest at so and so and damages so you give the title so that the judge understands that what is it that you have that you are seeking for then you start first you write about yourself the plaintiff the dash dash is a body incorporated under the companies act having its registered office at such and such place ab kya hota hai na everywhere you and every time you cannot be writing your uh, plaintiff's name you know mrs uh, godrej you know mrs uh, siemens no you therefore you say here and after it will be referred as the plaintiff and for the defendant also you will write so and so is the defendant here and after to be referred as a defendant to aapne pehle kya kiya aapne you explained about yourself that what is the plaintiff the plaintiff is a company incorporated under so and so it deals with such and such work and uh, it has its corporate office at such and such place then if it is a company of course the company on its own cannot speak it cannot file cases so it is through someone that this company is being represented so this particular commercial suit is being filed through some representative so here in the second is that mr so and so is one of the authorized representatives of the plaintiff and is fully conversant with the facts and circumstances of the cases as per information received and derived from the records maintained in the usual and ordinary course of business he is duly authorized so and so and so and so 
ठीक है ना इफ यू आर फाइलिंग रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट इन दैट ऑल्सो यू विल गिव दिस पैरा वेर एन यू विल से दैट दिस रिप्लाई और दिस रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट इज बींग फाइल्ड थ्रू सच एंड सच पर्सन ठीक है एंड ही is uh, completely authorized and you will also annex copy of uh, his authorization in your list of documents now then thereafter you will give details of the defendant that mr so and so is the uh, resident of so and so is the defendant here and he as per your knowledge deals with such and such things uske baad aap apna ye bataoge that why the suit has been filed okay the different facts how it started present suit arose out of registered commercial lease deed so and so entered between plaintiff and defendant yahan pe maine jaise likha hua hai you know and then the plaintiff required a commercial space for opening its branch at hoz khas for which purpose the lease premises was shortlisted so and so and so and so so you will give all the information in respect to the uh, dispute that how uh, the lease was entered into yeah maybe the how you uh, came into contact with the other side then what happened then how there was a business transaction between the uh, two parties and how the dispute arose and now why you have come to the court acha bahut zaruri baat maine jo aapko pehle batayi thi so uh, what i had told you in the beginning itself was that uh, before you file commercial suit it's very important that you go for the pre institution mediation why i had told you that because in your suit you have to inform court about the result of your pre institution mediation settlement you have to inform the court that you did go for the pre institution mediation and settlement process you went through that and uh, once you went through that thereafter only you have come to this court you know of course commercial suit file hui hai to it means that your pre mediation uh, uh, settlement process has failed because in case it has not failed then of course why will you file a commercial suit then the matter is settled so therefore uh, for that you need to have this para that having received no positive response from the defendant whatsoever plaintiff on such and such was compelled to approach uh, south delhi legal services authority for pre litigation mediation in terms of section 12a of the commercial courts act and schedule i a 1 of commercial courts pre institution mediation and settlement rules 2018 that in furtherance of the request of the plaintiff DLSA issued notice to the defendant on several occasions. However, even after being accorded repeated opportunities, defendant did not participate in the mediation proceedings, despite seeking time on multiple occasions. That after granting multiple opportunities to the defendant and acknowledging the non-cooperation of the defendant, the DLSA wide reference number so and so dated finally issued a non-starter report with the reason that so and so intimation. so is time matlab hua that in case the other side would not appear then you put in there that we did approach the particular institution for mediation but the mediation uh, never started as the defendant never responded to the notices hai na and never came so therefore uh, and even after multiple opportunities did not appear acha therefore uh, issuance of non starter report plaintiff have no other option is preferring the instant commercial suit it's very important it's very important part of your commercial suit you have to put this these three four paras in your uh, commercial suit you have to show that you did go for the uh, mediation but it did not work out or maybe the other side never appeared so after that you put the cause of action that how you felt that you should uh, initiate a court case against the other side or that now your money that you had given to other side or that money was due uh, to you that uh, the other side had to give it to you uh, so how and why you thought that you have to approach the court so cause of action wo aapko likhna padega that the force uh, for example you know uh, 
there is a person who uh, takes money from the other side saying that I will sell this particular flat to you. Okay. And the other side says, okay, fine, theek hai, and uh, agrees to it. And, and then the other side uh, gives some money to this uh, flat owner. Then the flat owner says, okay, now you can do one thing because I'm going abroad. So uh, we can have uh, one thing, we can do one thing. Uh, you can just uh, allow us, uh, you can uh, the, we'll ask, tell other side that you can have the flat and gradually you can give the rest of the money. Okay. Other side will come and uh, take the possession of the flat, but it fails to give the rest of the money. So maybe as per the agreement, within four months, the other side has to make the payment. But the others, it means that now the amount becomes due, gets due from on at the end of the fourth month. That it is now due that you have to give. Other side will not give. Then the other side will give you assurances. Okay, within two months, I will give it to you. Okay, you will stop, wait for that. Then again, then maybe you issue a legal notice to the other side that, you know, you give me my money or otherwise I will initiate legal proceedings against you. Uske baad maybe, you know, the other side will not make the payment. So this is cause of the action. This will give you the cause to initiate proceedings against the other side. So this is what the cause of action is. That you have to explain to the court that this, this legal action that you have taken, what is the cause for it? Why you think that you have got the right to file this particular suit? So cause of action para is very important. In the normal civil suits as well as in the commercial suits. So you have to explain that how and why you are saying that you have the right to uh, file this suit. For example, I have against a case file kar diya. Neither he has my money nor I, I gave uh, anything to that person. So why will that person give any money to me? So therefore, the cause of action has to be there and you have to explain to the court that why and how you think that you have right to recover this amount from the other side and when it uh, actually accrued. Kya hota hai? Maybe, you know, I have, uh, so I can see face of one of, I think she is a student, Miss Arushi. Okay. So for example, uh, I give something to Arushi. I, I give some, uh, I give three books to Arushi and I tell her that, you know, you can have two books free of cost, but the third book you will have to make the payment. Okay. And uh, she says, okay, payment because it's a very expensive book. Let's do one thing. I will give you the money after 15 days. Once my father is here and I take money from my father. So after 15 days, I will give you. Ab kya hota hai that before those 15 days expire, I file a suit against her. I say, no, she did not. You, I gave you three books. You did not make the payment, this, that. And I file a suit against her. Normal civil suit, for example. And, uh, or even if I initiate pre-mediation against her. So, that would not be right. Why? Because as per the agreement, she has 15 days time to give me that payment. So, after 15 days, if she will not make the payment to me, then the cause of action will arise. Otherwise, it won't be there. Okay. So, therefore, it is that once cause of action arises, then only you can file a suit. So, therefore, the para of cause of action is there wherein you say that on such and such date when the amount became due and it was not paid by Arushi to me. So, on that date, it is that I got the right to file a case against. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyways. So, after this, uh, you uh, write in aforementioned dues or admitted dues. It's a normal para. Then the subject matter of the suit. Huh? Then you have to also, this is very important. This everment is also very important in the commercial suits, wherein you uh, say that this suit comes within the definition of commercial uh, uh, dispute as per section 21C of the Commercial Courts Act. I have written 2-1-C, but actually what is it? You will have uh, section 2. So in 
section 2 of the commercial courts act once you go to a b c c c defines a commercial dispute ठीक है तो टू इज द मेन सेक्शन वन इज द सब क्लॉज ऑफ सेक्शन टू विच से इन दिस एक्ट अनलेस द कॉन्टेक्स्ट अदरवाइज रिक्वायर्स एंड देन यू कम टू सी ए बी इट इज सब सब क्लॉज कमर्शियल डिस्प्यूट इन दैट इट्स एक्सप्लेन सो दैट्स वाई यू राइट टू वन सी है ना यू कैन राइट टू कॉम इसमें uh you can write also after this for example i have i have only given 21c now in i 22 items are given there in 21c commercial def, uh, dispute definition 22 items are given which can be considered as commercial dispute you can actually put that sub sub clause also for example if your uh, matter is in respect to the franchising agreements or joint venture agreement so you can write section 2 c 11 sub clause hai na that can be also done explaining otherwise it, this is also good enough to one c mein so you are telling to the court that cause of action has arisen in my favor that is now i have the right to file the suit that's why i am filing this secondly you will also explain to the tell to the court that this particular case that i have filed is within definition of commercial dispute so you can entertain it fir last aata hai aapka jurisdiction that my case is within the territorial jurisdiction of this uh, court so this court can entertain it what i uh, uh, told you in the beginning that in delhi we have original side with the high court also that is in case your amount that you are claiming is more than 2 uh, crores then you can file original civil uh, original commercial suit before the high court hai na now in case it is below 2 crore then you will have to file it before the commercial courts of the that is district judge so for example you have filed a commercial suit where the claim is beyond 2 crore and you have filed it before the district judge hai na so and the dispute is of somewhere faridabad hai na so for that you have to make these two paras one is that this dispute is within the jurisdiction of this court for example your dispute has arisen somewhere in faridabad and you are filing your commercial suit in delhi so this the court here they will not have the jurisdiction hai na reason where of it is said that you will have to write in your suit in one of the paras that this particular court has the territorial jurisdiction faridabad ke court ke ka case jo hai wo saket court sun raha hai that's not possible okay so therefore it is compulsory that you write territorial jurisdiction and if you are thinking that faridabad court case can be heard by a district court here in delhi or the high court of delhi then in that situation you will have to explain to the court how come and your respondents your defendants they are also based in faridabad so how come you have filed it here cause of action yahan hai kya hai so therefore this particular para is here uh, himanshi i will himanshu i will come to you uh, i will come to you uh, acha in para 16 here and i have explained the quantum of the claim that is for example i told you in delhi high court beyond 2 crores you file cases and below that you have to file before the district judge now in case you file a case beyond 2 crores before the district judge obviously you will have to explain to the court how come you have filed before the dj and not before the high court hai na so therefore the quantum is to be given and you have to write there in that this court has the pecuniary jurisdiction or not hai yeah? 
तो यहीं पर ये यह हो जाता है दैट यू गिव योर पिक्यूनरी जूरिस्टिक्शन सो टू जूरिस्टिक्शन टेरिटोरियल एंड पिक्यूनरी पिक्यूनरी इज इट इज पिक्यूनरी जूरिस्टिक्शन इज इन डेली इट्स इन मुंबई यू विल हैव टू लुक इन टू दैट so pecuniary is where the courts have a limit ceiling that uh, claims up till this amount cannot be heard by them uh, can, cannot be uh, up, uh, claims up to this amount can be heard by them and beyond that cannot be heard by them beyond would be heard by such and such courts so that is pecuniary jurisdiction that is amount quantum of the claim and territorial jurisdiction is within the where because the cpc clearly says that in case the defendants are residing at a particular place then you can file a suit against them where the defendants are residing now also where the cause of action has arisen okay so for that you will have to show where for example you have executed contract at some point some place you will have to explain how the execution of that contract has given this particular court the jurisdiction many a times uh, even in the uh, agreements where an arbitration is not there many people they would write there in that in case of any dispute the jurisdiction of uh, delhi would be considered as the jurisdiction to hear the matter so even if it is executed in some other uh, state although the uh, supreme court says that writing that will not bind you but uh, people do write it now uh, then there is court fees so every court has their own uh, uh, table of the court fees that in case uh, the amount that you are claiming for example is 15 lakhs 20 lakhs so on that what amount of court fees you will have to pay so court fees for that you will have to buy from the uh, vendor court fees vendor and you will have to calculate first you will calculate as per the table of the particular state every state every high court every district court or every high court uh, in every state has different uh, table different uh, calculation uh, calculator for calculating the court fees to wo aap to jahan bhi practice karenge many of you may be just studying in delhi but uh, would be practicing in other parts of the country so once you start practicing then you will have to see the particular table the calculation uh, how the, uh, the court fees is being calculated in your state so as per that you will calculate the court fees you will tell it to your client your client will purchase the court fees and then you annex it you will paste it you will submit it along with your suit and for that you will put in your one averment in your uh, suit that the total amount of the claims that you are seeking for is of such and such amount and therefore on this such and such amount of court fees is applicable and same has been affixed here court fees ka para is also very important so jurisdiction territorial pecuniary if applicable to you mediation that it failed or it was non starter cause of action very important thereafter the court fees and then comes the limitation part so any suit is to be filed within particular period hai na usme limitation act is there in that different articles are given which says that in such and such situation if you want to file a suit so this is within this period particular period that you can file the suit so you have to explain in this one para that within time period within the limitation period you have filed this particular suit and in case there is any uh, delay or something why it has happened you know jaise when uh, this suit was filed it was some time in covid so maybe because of that some delay happened so the reasons are given there because of this is the system and they this delay will not be condoned because the honorable supreme court has condoned all the uh, delays that happened in the covid period so kya kya kiya aapne mediation ka para lagaya then the 
mediation para then the uh, para which says that your suit is a commercial suit because the dispute that has arisen is a commercial dispute as defined in section 21c then thereafter you write the territorial jurisdiction that this is the court where the jurisdiction is with the court uh, or territorial jurisdiction is with the court then you put in the pecuniary jurisdiction then you give the uh, court fees that you have submitted with the court and petition for that you have to file separate application also and also this para which says no other similar suit or petition has been instituted by the plaintiff against defendant with respect to the instant dispute as an owner channel that you file uh, one suit it got dismissed then again you thought that i will file one fresh suit against the defendant in respect to the same dispute okay or it is possible that you filed one suit in one state or in one uh, jurisdiction and you filed similar kind of suit in another jurisdiction pata hai kya hai so therefore uh, this suit is supported with affidavit and reason whereof in this suit you have to make a clear averment clear uh, submission part so then there is prayer whatever you want pass a decree directing defendant to make the payment directing defendant to make payment which became due on such and such day damages then the interest part and this para is always very important in any of your suit civil suit or commercial suit even in your writs also That uh, उसमें तो ऑर्डर लिख के आएगा रिट में बट हेयर इट इज पास एनी डिग्री ऑर्डर एज इज डीम्ड फिट एंड प्रॉपर बाई दिस ऑनरेबल कोर्ट बिकॉज मेनी टाइम्स मे बी यू विल मिस ऑन सम प्रेयर यू कैन ऑलवेज रिलाई ऑन दिस पार्ट इसमें भी जजमेंट सपोर्ट करनी पड़ेगी बट यू कैन ऑलवेज एंड देर आफ्टर द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ ट्रू दैट आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन टू यू सो द इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द प्लीडिंग्स इन द कमर्शियल सूट इज the commercial suit itself the list of documents which is not similar to the normal list of documents that you have in the civil suits but it's very different here you give the particulars of the document then you give that whether you are in possession of the original or not if not then what have you filed you have filed copy then even if you are in the possession then you have to give that uh, uh, still you have filed the photocopy if you are not in possession then who has the possession and when uh, since when you are in the possession of that particular document hai na ye humne abhi dekha tha upar which show to you this the details of the document documents in power possession who is in the power possession of document what have you filed original or photocopy how was it executed who executed line of custody that i am in possession of the original other side is in possession of the photocopy many a times what happens is for example uh, there is some uh, document which is uh, which uh, maybe you will have to submit with the government you know so uh, you can always say that the original of this document is with uh, such and such authority any document and uh, i have the photocopy so line of custody is also very important so uh, i will uh, provide this particular document to your coordinator and uh, she can share it with all of you 
Now, uh, yes, a tad boring subject, but it's very important. Okay. So normally what happens is that I do not uh, believe into all this uh, share showing documents and everything and then this uh, PowerPoint presentation and all that. I try to engage students and uh, in conversation and I try to make it uh, a little bit jolly kind of thing. But now because uh, most of you, I believe, are now going to be lawyers and that age has gone by. <laughs> so you had to get into this boring uh, session. <laughs> no, um, not at all boring. Uh, no, I, I uh, sort of uh, tend to get bored when, you know, I have to explain all this. Otherwise, you know, normally it is when we are discussing law when we are talking about the case laws or some other aspects of the law. So therein it's, you know, you talk about judgments and everything. I hope I will uh, uh, join in you again for some other lecture where I don't have this boring thing. So now I think you have some time for uh, questions because yes, one boy also asked me that. He was asking, this is his name? Star yeah. Yeah. So whosoever has any questions, yes, uh, you can. Yes. Good Mr. evening. Good, ev Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, my doubt tha ki, what can be the consequences of filing the wrong affidavit in commercial cases? See, uh, let's not only limit it to the commercial cases. Otherwise, also, when you are filing an affidavit, which is wrong, where you have uh, submitted something which is false, that is what you want to know. That if some false yes, thing, yes. So what happens is that for let's first talk about the district courts. Now you filed an affidavit wherein you have given something which is wrong, which is false. You just submitted it because you wanted that no adverse order should be passed against you, and you gave something wrong. Now other side pointed out that, or somehow the court came to know about it. If you are in district court. What happens is that the district court judges, they do not have the power to initiate contempt against you. They would refer it to the high court and they will seek contempt against the person. Contempt that they, this person tried to fool the court and has misled the court by making this false evidence before the court on oath. That is one. Second is Section 340 of CRPC, wherein what happens is that you, the other side itself, when will find that the affidavit that has been filed has something, it is not just the affidavit, otherwise also on oath in the suit itself or some document which has been filed before the court, which is forged, maybe the contents are wrong, affidavit itself, the contents are wrong. In that situation, the other side can also file an application seeking action against this particular person who has done perjury. That is, on record has stated something false. So, action would be taken against that person and he can be thrown into jail where he will have to, then the criminal proceedings would be against the person. Now, for example, somebody has filed a false affidavit before the Honorable High Court. Therein, because the courts have the power to initiate contempt itself against a person who has tried to mislead it, who has tried to play around, play with it, to fraud, play a fraud on the court, then they can immediately call the registrar general, is called, and he is told that you uh, initiate, because high court is represented through registrar general. So the uh, registrar general is called and it is said that this particular person has given, submitted false affidavit, tried to fool us and you initiate proceedings against him. Immediately a complaint is written, uh, is lodged and the police will come and take this person from the court itself to jail. See? <laughs> so uh, court on its own can also initiate proceedings under 340 saying that, you know, if the court itself realizes. So it is, it is between, 340 is between court and the particular person. Other, the other side only brings it to the knowledge of the court that this is this is why we think that this person should be held under 340. So this is, this is what happens. So on oath, oath commissioners are uh, actually 
uh, they are given that post by the government itself by the courts itself so these people are uh, somewhere some some uh, someone before whom when you write something and then they will say that okay this was stated before us and they will put their stamp on it so it becomes something which is sacred which is truth and if it's found that it is wrong on oath so then you are called in court itself also when a witness or someone states anything gives an undertaking or a statement he is first asked to state the say the oath and after that if he has said something you know so then also you are held so uh, it's it's a very dangerous thing so in affidavits uh, if you know that your client is lying you should always advise him that you know or maybe you do not know about it tab to different thing hai but if you are aware of it you have to tell your client that you know it will be very difficult so this is what it is uh i think i your ma'am excuse me ma'am ha haan ji who is now ha yes mr sagar haan ji pande ji yes ma'am मैं पूछ रहा था कि एफिडेविट अगर कोई रॉन्ग फाइल कर देता है तो उसको अमेंडमेंट करने का कोई प्रोसीजर नहीं है अमेंडमेंट करने का प्रोसीजर इज लाइक दिस फॉर एग्जांपल आई विल टेल यू माय ओन केस ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट बॉडी वेर इन द पर्सन हु केम फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ही सेड दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉपर्टी इज ऑलरेडी इट हैज बीन गिवन टू सम अदर पर्सन नाउ it was a property which was allot allotted to some um, person say abc and then the government cancelled it cancelled the allotment theek okay. hai this person filed a suit against the government saying no they will have to give it to me and uh, till the time it is decided whether they should give it to me or not they who they be stayed the stay be granted they be stopped from giving it to somebody else so the person who was present in court on behalf of the government he said oh it has been already given to somebody else okay so okay so court said okay you file an affidavit in respect to this so immediately in days that time only without his uh, somebody told him no no it is right yes it is already given to somebody else and later on it was affidavit was filed and later on when he went back and after 2 3 days some file he got hold of and it was found that no it was not given it was thought to be given but that was not approved to humne immediately amended uh, aapka uh, affidavit banaya and with application supporting and saying that for this reason that we thought because when the file had come to me it was given there in that it should be given to someone but unfortunately and it's my mistake that i uh, stated wrongly in the affidavit that it has been given to someone now i want to correct it it is this and these are the documents which support it if the court feels that yes it was an innocent mistake of course they will allow it but there are situations where it the courts are not stupid or fool they will understand that now the other side maybe has pointed out that you have given wrong facts in your wrong uh, statement in your affidavit that's why you are correcting it or now you have felt that you know now court will come to know about it that's why you have come they will haul you for it they will not allow amendment theek hai ji now himanshu yes tell me ma'am it is related to the arbitration yes please if someone has given uh, gone in arbitration then he can go for commercial uh, commercial court see normally what happens is that if somebody files a suit before the commercial court okay we'll say that uh, this is the dispute there was an uh, agreement and then the other side breached it so we have these these claims and we went for a settlement process also it did not work out now we are filing this commercial suit other side can come and will show that in the agreement it is clearly given that in case there is a there any dispute arises then the parties will go for arbitration theek hai वो दिखाने की देर होती है सेक्शन एट ऑफ द आर्बिट्रेशन एक्ट इफ यू आर एबल टू शो टू द कोर्ट दैट देर इज अ क्लॉज विच सेज दैट द पार्टीज कैन गो फॉर आर्बिट्रेशन इन केस ऑफ डिस्प्यूट देन यू विल द कोर्ट विल सेंड रेफर इट फॉर द आर्बिट्रेशन 
then the suit will not go on. Two parallel proceedings in respect to this cannot go on. Either it is arbitration or it is civil suit. Okay, sir. Yes, ma'am. A question or jo section 27 of Indian Evidence Act. Hai. Hmm. वो कहता है कि सिविल प्रोसीडिंग की जो भी बातें आउटसाइड द कोर्ट हुई हैं वो लेटर देते हैं कि हम इन चीजों को वैलिड नहीं मानेंगे कोर्ट में हां जी तो वो मैम इसमें हो सकता है मीडिएशन में हां जी इसमें भी होता है दैट इज व्हाई आई सेड व्हेन इन मीडिएशन यू से नंबर ऑफ थिंग्स है ना आप बहुत बार यू एडमिट आल्सो सर्टेन थिंग्स हां जी हमसे भी गलती हुई थी ठीक है जी चले 40 करोड़ नहीं चले 30 करोड़ पे ही मान लेते हैं बट देन इट विल नॉट वर्क आउट फॉर एग्जांपल तो ये तो इसका मतलब नहीं हुआ ना कि आपने बोला तीस करोड़ ही लेते हैं ठीक है हमसे भी गलती हुई थी तो कल को कोर्ट में कहेंगे जी इन्होंने तो बोला था वहां बिकॉज वेन यू आर सिटिंग इन सेटलमेंट दैट टाइम इट्स अ रिलैक्स्ड सिस्टम एंड दैट टाइम यू डू नॉट वांट टू मेक एलिगेशन बिकॉज इन केस यू वुड बी हॉट एंड यू नो हॉट एंड बर्निंग ड्यूरिंग द सेटलमेंट टॉक्स तो तो कोई सेटलमेंट होगा नहीं तो आप उस वक्त लीनियंट होते हो सो देर फॉर वॉट है the mediators will only write failed mediation failed they will not record any of your submissions until unless settlement comes and the settlement both the parties agree to certain things usme aap retract nahi kar sakte ho then you have to uh, uh, you are bound by that once both the parties sign and the mediation agreement is there theek hai otherwise uh, in arbitration also many a times before arbitration we go for conciliation proceedings so whatever happens in the conciliation proceedings that cannot be used in this in the arbitration proceedings okay now nikhil rathi yes ma'am thank you ma'am my question is ki jaise cpc mein de rakha hai section 44a related to foreign judgment ka execution ha then if there is a foreign judgment related to a commercial matter ha ji then is it Uh, executed in the same section or is there any specific provision provided under the commercial code set i see as such uh, it is not given so for that you will have to go under that only because usme dekhe na kya hai na why commercial courts act has come it is to expedite the process now in respect to the implementation of the uh, foreign award foreign orders so for that it does not take that much of time trial wagaira hona nahi hai usme you know you have to just show that whether the ingredients are fulfilled or not and the court will take it as a decree uh, that has been passed by the courts in india so therefore uh, for that there is no special specific provision maybe they will come up with that but for now we do not have that and ma'am one more question yes uh, what would be the consequence if there is non compliance with the order of the commercial courts act order which order acha non compliance yes ah, see what happens is like in civil courts also uh, once a decree is passed in your favor and you know, similarly when an order is passed in your favor either the other party will go and challenge it man lijiye challenge bhi kar liya you went to high court supreme court you know, and then you lose the matter so the other party will file an execution against you and in execution of course the courts will attach your property like it happens in the civil courts okay ma'am thank you hmm. so you have to comply with the orders chahe kisi bhi court ka ho uh aastha yes okay. aastha good evening ma'am uh my question was like if some uh, sometime like for intent uh advocate try to manipulate the fact and affidavit for intent hmm. then uh, the advocate will be turned time to court or something like that or not See, normally what happens is that in affidavit, for example, your client does not know English, you yeah, know. So yeah. what happens is that you put a para in your affidavit wherein you will say that this uh, suit has been read to the plaintiff in the vernacular language. That is the language that this person is aware of. Hindi hai, Urdu hai, Punjabi yeah. hai. जो भी है भोजपुरी है वोट एवेर है ठीक है द लैंग्वेज दैट दिस पर्सन इज अवेयर ऑफ तो देन यू पुट इन देर दैट दिस हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन टू हिम एवरीथिंग नाउ नॉर्मली इन केस देयर इज अ फैक्ट व्हिच इज अ लाइ एंड द प्लेंटिफ इज अवेयर ऑफ दैट सो द प्लेंटिफ इज अलाउिंग दैट लॉयर टू राइट इट देयर इन द सूट प्लेन ओके द प्लेंटिफ कैन ऑलवेज टेल टू दिस पर्सन दैट नो प्लीज डोंट इंक्लूड इट 
please don't write it there in the suit. This has not happened. Many a times, I don't do matrimonial matters, but I have seen in the matrimonial matters, most of the times, the lawyers tend to mm -hmm. add on certain things which are not correct. So many parties, you know, many people, they do tell to the lawyer, no, please don't add it. Add it. Achha, bahut baar kya hota hai? Maybe the lawyer won't tell to the uh, person. Party. So, yeah. haan, to the party. So, uh, yes, party will have to explain to the court. It's very difficult that the party is able to convince the court that uh, the lawyer read it to him, uh, did never told him that he is including all this. So, it's very difficult uh, proposition actually. So, uh, if it is found that the lawyer has done this, of course, the court will not only hold him in contempt, but will also ask him to uh, compensate the particular person and can be uh, then uh, legal action, criminal action can be also initiated. In fact, complaints can be uh, also initiated before the bar council of whichever state he is registered with. So that can be done, yes. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. Anyone else has an, any, any query? They can raise their hand. Uh, I think no one has raised a hand as of now. Mm -hmm. So I hope everyone is clear on whatever you thought. Maybe so I would like not understood anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sagar has raised her hand again. Sagar, you have a query? Yes, sir. Uh, so sorry, ma'am. Uh, I forget to say thank you so much, ma'am, oh, for answering. <laughs> I also so, forgot to say God bless to you. So God bless you. <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, ma'am, for uh, such a nice and uh, informative lecture and for enlightening our students. And we really appreciate, we greatly appreciate the time and effort you must have put in preparing this lecture and delivering it with such dedication and passion. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, coming here today. Hope to see you uh, I, more. You know, I will. I I uh, appreciate all the questions that were put by the students here, in because uh, I have also taught some lawyers. Um, there is one uh, portal for uh, I was teaching uh, lawyers across the country this act because this is new and people are not aware of this. So I was assigned this task and teaching. In fact, they do not have such interesting questions that your students had. So uh, I think credit goes to you also and to all the students. You know, they have this, it's, it's good. And I would want that most of you should go into litigation. Judiciary is mm -hmm. Academics is also good. <laughs> uh, but uh, I would want that uh, you should go into, and especially the uh, girls, uh, the females, female students. So thank you so much for having me and uh, thank uh, you so much ma'am for gracing us. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Students can, uh, you can fill out the feedback form students. I will circulate the link in the group.